Dear friends, today our discussion is related to unity gain buffers using operational amplifiers. The voltage follower or the unity gain buffer is a circuit constructed out of operational amplifier with gain equal to 1. Now consider the non-inverting amplifier with the feedback network and consider the output and the closed loop gain as given below. Let us consider the closed loop gain of a non-inverting amplifier. From our previous discussions and video tutorials, we have seen that the closed loop gain of non-inverting amplifier is 1 plus the ratio of the feedback to the input resistance. Now in the above equation, if we can remove the ratio term of resistors, if we can remove this and equate it to zero, then again the amplifier becomes equal to unity. This can be achieved only if the resistance Ri is very large or Rf is equal to zero. In the above equation, if we can remove the ratio terms of resistors and make it zero, then the gain of the amplifier becomes equal to unity. This can be achieved only if the resistance Ri is very large. By removing it, the resistance between the ground and the inverting terminal becomes infinity and hence very very large. In the figure here we can see that the resistor Ri has been removed making it infinite. So refer to the expression above anything divided by something very large makes the term equal to zero. So it is useless to keep the feedback resistor RF and we can just remove it and replace it with a short circuit. So our main target would be to eliminate RI. If we eliminate RI, the resistance between the ground and the inverting terminal becomes infinite and since this becomes infinite, the ratio term tends to zero. Now why to keep a resistor RF? We can simply remove it and replace it with a short circuit. And hence we'll be able to remove the resistor's ratio term and the gain will be equal to one. So in this figure, we can see that the feedback resistance RF has been completely removed and it has been replaced with a short circuit. The output voltage is now equal to the input voltage and hence we call this a unity gain buffer or we can also call it as a voltage follower. Now what are the applications of voltage follower? The input impedance of operational amplifiers is usually very large. So any source connected at the input will be isolated from the output or we can say that we are avoiding source loading. The impedance matching or buffer can be used to connect a high impedance source to a low impedance load. Mostly used in audio microphone and preamplifier circuits for impedance matching. It is also used in voltmeters to increase the input impedance. Now this is very important because the main aim of the voltmeter is to measure the potential difference between the two points without drawing any current from the circuit. So if we can use an operational amplifier at the very input of the measuring device, it will restrict the current consumption from the original circuit. Now let us see what is source loading. Let us assume a microphone that is connected to an amplifier directly. Initially, the me mechanical sound wave gets converted into electrical signal by the microphone. The amplifier sources some current for its normal operation and we will call it I amp. Any audio amplifier which directly drives the speaker requires some amount of 
current for its normal operation. That particular current here is denoted by I amp. When the microphone is connected, a current flows from it to the amplifier and let us call that I mic. Let the voltage that appears across the microphone and the amplifier be V mic. But in reality and in practical cases, current from the microphone is very very less compared to the current required for the amplifier for its normal operation. So we can call I mic is less than I amp and thus the signal that is provided by the microphone to the input of the amplifier may get reduced and no amplification is possible at the output of the amplifier. We also have to know that the microphone cannot provide larger amount of currents and hence the amplifier fails to amplify the signal from the microphone. So in order to amplify the signal coming out of the microphone, we need to have a pre-amplifier that has to be connected between the microphone and the power amplifier. Now let us assume the microphone to be connected to the amplifier via a voltage follower. Now the voltage follower behaves as a buffer or the isolator between the microphone and the amplifier. The unity gain buffer has a very high input impedance and it will not draw any current from the microphone. That means the current from the microphone into the operational amplifier will be negligible. Here we are considering it to be zero. Let the signal voltage appear across the input of the operational amplifier be V mic. The voltage, the signal voltage that is coming out of the microphone will be directly available at the input of the operational amplifier. And since it's a voltage follower, the same output will be available at the output of the operational amplifier. But the amplifier for its normal operation requires certain amount of current. We know it is I amp, but we all know the amplifier for its normal operation requires I amp current which will now be delivered by the operational amplifier from the both the power sources as and when required by the amplifier. So to conclude in this video tutorial we have seen the concept of unity gain buffer. We have seen the relevant circuit and its analysis. We have also seen the application of unity gain buffer and have also seen the effects of source loading and how we can avoid it using a unity gain buffer. Hope you have liked the video and if you have liked the video, kindly subscribe to the channel Ionet Tech Talk and thank you very much for watching the video.